Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is on what I would consider some best practices when drawing a t shirt or any other garment illustration in Illustrator. The other day I was poking around the Illustrator application files and I found a folder that has some blank te templates. There was a t shirt template in there, so I opened it. I was very curious to see what Illustrator had provided. And I have to be honest, I was really disappointed with how they had constructed the garment. Um, Illustrator and Adobe in general puts out a really great product that I think that they are really proud of. And people are very impressed with and I just thought this was really out of character for what Illustrator and Adobe puts out um, on a design level as well as on an efficiency level in terms of how they put this garment together. So the first thing I want to note is how the ribbing is done. You'll notice it's done as individual paths here so this is really really inefficient and frustrating if I want to manipulate this it's essentially impossible if I need to change the curvature of the neckline. Um, I cannot manage this ribbing in any way that's efficient. The other thing that they did that is a little bit um, more forgivable but again not something I would typically do is they've drawn the stitch lines here, the double needle stitch on the hem as two individual paths not utilizing a pattern brush to do that which would be the most efficient and precise way to do this. So. I want to demonstrate some ways that I would approach this differently. The first is by only drawing half of the garment I can then reflect it and create a garment that is perfectly symmetrical and looks a little bit nicer if that's the look you're going for. If you want something hand drawn and not flat and symmetrical that's fine you can hand draw the whole thing but I typically tend to draw half and then reflect. So what I've done is I've drawn half of my garment here. I'm going to select those paths now I've made sure that my center anchor points are all lined up perfectly. I've got my smart guides on. I'm going to grab my reflect tool which is on the toolbar underneath the rotate tool shortcut letter O. By holding the option or alt key at the very center I can click with the reflect tool. Again holding option or alt. I click at the center front. This is what's going to define the axis of reflection and that's where I want it to be at the very center front. So I click and release there. By holding the option or alt it brings up the reflect dialog box which gives me a preview and gives me the ability to choose copy. That will both reflect and copy my t-shirt at the same time thus giving me my entire t-shirt all seamed up perfectly in the middle. Now it's not actually seamed up like I just said. Let me turn off my drawing. I do still have this as individual pieces so I'm just going to come down the center front with my direct selection tool and I'm going to join all of these paths. I'm just using the keyboard shortcut command J to do this. So now I've got a nice symmetrically drawn t-shirt and the first thing I want to do is I want to change these paths here to be a double needle top stitch brush. So I'm going to do that. It's pretty simple to create this type of brush. It's probably one of the most simple brushes you could create in Illustrator. I take a path, I open my stroke panel and I'm going to give this a stroke of 0.5. I want it to have a dashed line and as I come in here I just want to make sure it ends right at a gap. So I see my anchor point is here right at a gap and my other anchor point starts here right at a dash. With my selection tool I'm going to hold the option or alt key to make a copy of this as I click and drag. And I've got my smart guides on so you can see that green line in the center is automatically keeping it in line. Otherwise I just hold shift so that it stays in the same position. With these two paths selected I open my brushes panel and I drag and drop this into my brushes panel. I specifically want to create a pattern brush. I choose OK and I can name this double needle top stitch and hit OK. Now we'll come out and we will select our sleeve and body hem stitch lines and we will apply our double needle top stitch brush. Now what we've got is the ability to control these with one single path. It's much more efficient and handy to do it this way than the way Illustrator provided this file to us where if we want to change this we've got to manipulate two individual paths. So pattern brushes allow you to manipulate your artwork. Anything that's a linear repeat is a great thing to create as a pattern brush that you can then control with one single path. The second thing I want to go into is the ribbing. Again, don't create your ribbing like this as individual pass it's really impossible to manipulate and manage that on any level as you need to update or edit your artwork. 
what you want to do is you can either create a pattern brush like we did for the stitching or one of the simple ways to create ribbing is just use a dashed line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a path that essentially intersects the center of my neckline. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a dash to it. Now first I want it to be the same color as the rest of my garment, so I'm using my eyedropper tool to do that. I then open my stroke panel and I just turn the dash line on. At first it doesn't look like anything that's really what we want, but what you have to do is you have to play with the weight of the stroke as well as the spacing in the dash. So I think it needs to be a little bit thicker, so let's try 7.3. That looks pretty good. And the dash line here, so I want my dash to be a little bit thinner, so I'm going to say 0.5 for my dash, and my gap to be a little bit thicker so that the ribbing doesn't look quite so dense, so we'll say a four-point gap. This again is all in the stroke panel, and it's pretty great what you can do with just a dash line to emulate ribbing. I would do the same thing for the back neck. And I then have the ability to manipulate and control this very, very easily, unlike what I've got over here in this template that Adobe provided for us. So again, just a couple of the best practices I like to follow for my fashion sketches um, that I use for designing. Thanks for watching. This is So Heidi.